So we've talked about graphing using transformations and also done some graphing by plotting points. But another way we can graph is by using the x and the y intercepts and the multiplicities and determining where the function is above or below the x-axis to graph. So for example, if we have x minus 2 quantity squared times the quantity x plus 1, we can find the x-intercepts and the y-intercepts, just like we did in the previous problem in the previous video. So remember, for x-intercepts, we set the function equal to 0. So we'll have x minus 2 squared times x plus 1 equals 0. And remember, we can just then set each factor, ignoring its exponents, equal to 0 and solve. So for the first equation we add 2, for the second equation we subtract 1, that's from both sides. So we end up with x equals 2 and x equals negative 1. For the y-intercept, we find whatever the value of the function is when x equals 0. So we're essentially finding f of 0. Not essentially, we are. So we plug in 0 for x and see what we get out. So we have negative 2 squared times a negative 1. Oops, that should be plus 1, sorry. So that's a positive 1. Negative 2 squared times a positive 1 gives us a positive 4. So let's decide where the function is above or below the x-axis. So here's what I do. I just make myself a number line. <clears throat> and I put my x-intercepts on the number line. So my x-intercepts were negative 1 and 2. Then I pick a number in each interval here. So one of my intervals is less than negative 1. One interval is from negative 1 to 2. And my third interval is greater than 2. So for the first interval, I'm just going to pick x equals negative 2. For the second interval, I'll pick x equals 0. Doesn't matter. It can be any number between negative 1 and 2. And for the third one, I will pick x equals 3. I always try to, and it shouldn't be x equals, it should be x equals negative 2 in the first one. Then I just evaluate the function at each of these x values. So f of negative 2 is negative 2 minus 2 squared times a negative 2 plus 1. So that gives us negative 4 squared times a negative 1 is negative 16. So this is a negative number. That means function, the function is below the x-axis. So for this area, we have, I mean, this interval of x's, we have below x-axis. Okay, now let's plug in x is 0. We don't actually have to do that because we already did that when we found the y-intercept. The value is 4. Since it's positive, that means the function is above the x-axis. So here we're above the x-axis. And now let's evaluate the function at f equals, I mean at x equals 3. So we have 3 minus 2 squared 
times 3 plus 1. So 1 squared times 4 is a positive 4. So since it's positive, the function is still above the x-axis. So what does that mean if we try to graph it? Well, first, let's put our intercepts on the graph. Graph. So one intercept was x equals negative 1. One x-intercept was x equals 2. And we know our y-intercept was at 4. Now what do we else do we know? We know that when x is less than negative 1, the function is below the x-axis. So that means it's down here somewhere. And it's coming up because it's got to get to that intercept. Then we know from negative 1 to positive 2, it's above the axis. So it comes up and it's got to hit our y-intercept at 4. And then at some point it turns around and it comes back down because it's got to hit the x-intercept at 2. Now from 2 and bigger for x values, we know that we're still above the x-axis. So that means at 2, it just touches the axis and then turns around and goes back up. So there is a very rough sketch of what our function looks like. Now let's use this graph and let's look at the next page to make some generalizations. So if we look at this graph, let's see what the difference between the multiplicities is. So if we look, our x equals negative 1, that had a multiplicity of 1 because remember there's an invisible 1 exponent on that factor. Our x-intercept of 2 came from a factor with a multiplicity of 2 because its exponent is a 2. So what happens? At the multiplicity of 1, the function crossed the x-axis. And at the x-intercept with a multiplicity of 2, the graph only touched the x-axis. So we can make some generalizations here. If r is a zero of even multiplicity, then numerically the sign of f of x stays the same from one side of R to the other. And so graphically, the graph of F just touches the x-axis at that R value. If R is of odd multiplicity, then the sign of F of x changes from one side of the x-intercept to the other, and the graph crosses the x-axis at that intercept r. We'll pick up with the turning points theorem in the next video.